Hello everybody and welcome back, or for the first time if you are new around here. In case you don't know, I am Lily, aka Lily Koi, and I make videos about achieving holistically healthy lifestyle, from diet to exercise to sleep to mental health. It's all important and it all gets covered. If any of that sounds of interest to you, consider hitting that subscribe button. If you're not new around here, you probably know that I'm vegan. I just wanted to get telling everyone out of the way since, you know, that's a contractual obligation of being vegan. You know, we tell everyone, haha. -ha. So since I've been seeing a lot of discussion over the last year, really, about veganism versus plant-based diets, I thought I would chime in with my two cents. So quick definition, in case you don't know, veganism is an ism. It's a belief system, which the proponents of veganism translate into a lifestyle. At the core of the vegan belief system is that humans can and should choose to live their lives in a way that results in the least amount of suffering and exploitation as possible. Generally, this belief is interpreted into action by eliminating the use of animal products as much as is practical and possible. That means that we vegans don't eat meat, we don't drink or eat dairy, we don't eat eggs, we don't wear leather, definitely not fur, and we do our best to take the vegan option wherever we can. Unfortunately, a perfect lifestyle where we can avoid all harm and suffering isn't currently possible, but we make these choices wherever they are possible and practical. So veganism is a belief system that translates into an ethics-based lifestyle. Often people become aware of veganism through the vegan diet, which excludes meat, dairy, eggs, and other animal products. A lot of people try a vegan diet because they've heard that it's good for weight loss, which it definitely can be if it's done the right way. Or they've heard about it because it's on trend. And so when people first become aware of a vegan diet, they aren't entirely aware of the philosophy behind veganism or the fact that it translates into an entire lifestyle. These people who are trying out a vegan diet may still wear leather, they may still include animal products in their diet from time to time, like if their favorite bread at their favorite restaurant includes egg. People eating this way may have noticed that ethical vegans get upset by them calling themselves vegans, because these people don't quite understand or subscribe to the underlying belief system of veganism. Ethically based vegans would prefer that these people call themselves plant-based. And I have noticed that some vegans can get pretty aggressive and very condescending in expressing this preference. And I get that. As a vegan who has purposely educated herself to the scale and intensity of the suffering of animals whenever they are commodified, the pressure to end these practices becomes really intense and very emotionally charged. I feel the anger, I feel the desperation, I feel the grief every time I see these videos or think about the suffering that's, that's experienced every single minute of every day by these innocent beings. And when you're aware of that, it's really easy to realize that there is nothing more important than ending the suffering of trillions of beings. But with that having been said, you may have also noticed that over the last year, I have gotten kind of particular about my semantics, and I have switched from describing my diet and the diet that I promote from just a vegan diet to one that is made up of, quote unquote, predominantly whole plant foods. Why, may you ask, am I selling out and betraying veganism? Well, to be perfectly frank, and a little untoward, it's because vegans are doing a great job of stepping on their own dicks when it comes to successfully converting average humans to veganism. And it kind of pains me to say that because I was one of those vegans for a long time, still am sometimes, <laughs> so I totally get it. The desperation, the grief, the being willing to do anything to make the suffering stop and the intense feeling of immediacy in needing people to change 
now. But when I was a little over a year into the whole YouTube hobby thing, I realized that my attitude and my style of communication was actually getting in my own way when it came to introducing veganism to newbies. I was doing a great job of preaching to the already established vegan choir, but people who were trying to approach this lifestyle for the first time were not connecting with my message, and they let me know that. <laughs> the comments that they left me have helped me to realize how much I was thinking of non-vegans as almost non-humans. I was equating their ignorance with intention, like they were purposely making choices that caused the most harm possible because they were heartless. Which, to be fair, is true sometimes. They're like some genuinely crapbag human beings that exist. But a lot of humans are not crapbags. And for those good people who do want to make positive changes, what I have learned is that they don't respond to the way that I used to communicate in most of my videos. They change by being informed, by being encouraged, by being supported, and by being given some room to make mistakes without being shamed. And they respond really positively to empathetic understanding. I've also come to understand that the average person approaching veganism for the first time is like a little newborn baby deer who's slowly venturing out into an open meadow for the first time. They're terrified. They're terrified of social scorn. They're terrified of protein deficiencies and judgy, mean vegans that they've heard about. It's scary for them. It's new. And it takes so little to turn the average person off during the early days of their contemplation or transition. So for the first year or so of my YouTube hobby, I was of the firm opinion that it was not my job to coddle you like your codependent mommy. I'm here to tell you the truth. And I still maintain that the truth is important, but I have made a lot of communicative mistakes that have made me much less effective at appealing to anyone outside the established vegan echo chamber. And I credit a lot of the reasonable, constructive criticism, as well as the explosively hateful backlash that I've received from those videos as the catalyst that has changed my perspective and ultimately my communication style. So I had to take a step back and ask myself, you know, why am I spending my time doing this? Is it to get into a mutually validating judgmental circle jerk with other vegans? Is it to make some clickbait money? Or is it to be a part of the world changing to the extent that it might actually be habitable in a hundred years? And my motivation, for the most part, has always been the last option. And as much as I love and appreciate every vegan on this earth for making the choices that they do, and I am so invested in helping each and every one of you succeed, I also have to acknowledge that some of y'all, some of the loudest ones of y'all, are insane. Like this vegan dude named Leo, who belongs to a vegan group on Facebook. He posted some silly, poorly researched and presented largely false and purposely negative article about a prominently vegan outreach group that was obviously intended to discredit this group. And I commented my opinion, trying to be at least like relatively kind and proactive in the way that I communicated in the face of such a malignant level of stupidity. And he responded by calling me a speciesist, see you next Tuesday, three times, then blocked me so I couldn't respond. I mean, I'm approaching a decade as a committed ethical vegan, and that guy really soiled my pride in that claim. I mean, I feel turned off by veganism after that kind of experience with that kind of guy. I can't imagine what's a mother of two in the Midwest who heard about veganism on Dr. Oz and just felt kind of curious must think about those kinds of ridiculous outbursts that are really common in these vegan groups. And while I won't totally eat my own words by saying that they're doing it wrong, I will simply say that if your aim is to be effective at converting the masses of average people to ultimate ethical veganism, as is my aim, it is 
my and your, our responsibility to evaluate the effectiveness of our outreach. How can we best meet people where they are with compassion and encouragement to get them on a healthful, more ethically focused path? From my own experience and from research and reading that I've done on the topic, presenting a dogmatic all or nothing approach where you're either vegan or you're part of the problem may be the truth, but it is not an effective way to entice someone into making the best choice because it is just that. It is a choice. People can choose to dissociate themselves from reality anytime they want. And not only is that a choice, it's the easiest choice. It is the choice that they are encouraged to do every single day by friends, family, mass media, etc. It also feels like the safest choice. It is the most comfortable choice. It's the most common choice. It's the choice that I want to make in this world, and I am a strong, present, persistent, committed, informed, critical thinking person. The average person wandering around the wilds of the US or Europe or Australia is not a strong, persistent, present, committed, informed, critical thinking person. They are more like an emotional toddler zombie with a Pepsi IV. Some of those people wake up and they lift their heads up long enough to notice that there's something wrong with this situation and they want to change their lives and they want to change their families' lives. And I want to reach out and connect with as many of those waking up people as possible. I believe that the most effective way to do that is through kindness, enthusiasm, encouragement, honesty, authenticity, mutual respect, humor, and logic. Now, what I'm saying here, I know will be uh, purposefully or otherwise misinterpreted by many within the vegan movement as me selling out or pandering to the masses or watering down veganism, and I get that. I do get that argument, but I'm not saying that anyone is necessarily doing it wrong. I mean, calling someone a species is three times isn't going to help anything. But I do firmly believe that peaceful direct action is definitely part of the necessary activism that needs to be done in a holistic way. So I'm not saying that everyone should do their vegan activism exactly like I'm doing it. I am saying that you should connect with whatever vegan activism feels best to you, and that if you want to be most effective in being able to communicate people to evaluate the way in which we are communicating with them, and evaluate the way in which we are thinking of them. Because I have noticed myself many times thinking of the people who I'm trying to reach out to as less than human, as not having the same feelings that I have, of not having the same compassion of not struggling the way I have. And in my work on YouTube, connecting with other people who are trying to make this change for themselves and who are struggling, what I have come face to face with are not careless, selfish, mean people. What I've come face to face with time and time again are people who are just struggling with emotional or psychological or physical issues that need to be tweaked and worked on in order for them to succeed. And me being mean to them or shaming them for their inability to succeed right away on a vegan diet doesn't help them, it shuts them down. Another reason why I have stopped using the phrase, you know, vegan diets, is that I don't necessarily believe that vegan diets, in which the ultimate aim is to eliminate the use of animal products as much as possible and practical, are the equivalent of healthy diets because, let us not forget, Oreos and most soda are considered vegan. There are now vegan donuts, cookies, ice cream, candies, bacon burgers, and a myriad of other heavily processed deep fried, oily, sugary garbage, and these products are not going to make any positive change in our health. In fact, I believe that these foods impede and degrade our health, even though they are cruelty free. And I believe that if someone makes a switch to veganism and bases their diet off of these types of overly processed foods, 
their health will continue to get worse, exactly as it does for virtually everyone who's on a standard Western diet. And I believe that eventually they will give up the whole vegan thing and they will be one of those people who went vegan for a while and it nearly killed me. So now I specifically specify a whole plant food diet as much as possible. You crowd out the processed, the animal-based crap with fiber-rich and nutrient-dense whole plant foods and eventually you will become a vibrant, healthy, passionate, accidental and hopefully ethical vegan because as health and vitality improve in a person our consciousness naturally raises along with it and once we're already making the choice to eat a diet that's based on whole plant foods and we see how easy that is how great we feel making the step to ethical veganism seems really minute it seems like an easy step to take and the painful feelings of guilt and shame that we feel from contributing to the horrors of animal suffering are already largely alleviated. So the pull to dissociate and make excuses doesn't feel like it's as necessary for someone who's already eating a predominantly plant-based diet. At that point, a switch to ethical veganism is kind of a no-brainer. And I know that that is how many, many people have made it to ethical veganism, self-included. I came for a health improvement. I came for a plant-based diet that was going to help me heal and feel good again. And that happened, and along the way, I learned about the ethical side of it, and I became strongly committed to that. But even if someone doesn't go on that journey like I did, even if someone just stays eating a predominantly whole food plant-based diet and doesn't choose to pursue ethical veganism for whatever reason, I still have to admit that they are doing a lot for the animals, for our planet, for their health, and so my largest concern isn't with picking over semantics with them. It's with the half-dead toddler zombies who are shoving burgers into their faces six times a day. I also think it's important to maintain my credibility throughout the YouTube community by acknowledging that yes, Scientific research indicates that humans are capable of ingesting two to three servings of animal foods per week without significant detriment to health or longevity. Most people. Does that mean that it is ethically okay? No. Does it mean that I eat animal foods or I support others in doing so? Absolutely not. But if someone watching my videos decides that the biggest change that they are capable of making right now is to go vegan while allowing themselves to eat animal products two to three times a week as a security blanket for themselves or their nagging family, I'm not going to shame them because that choice is one hell of a positive step in the right direction. And I have yet to meet one person who takes one well-executed positive step forward to better health and stops. That kind of stuff builds on itself. Improvement becomes something of an addiction, and it's done in manageable steps with positive encouragement. The strong dopamine hit of improvement and connection and enthusiasm can and does replace the paltry dopamine surge that you get from crappy junk food. So I still maintain that ethical veganism is, and should be, the ultimate goal. But I'm not going to stall someone's journey to better health and a more comprehensive consciousness by demanding that the cart go before the horse, so to speak. Because let's remember that for the vast majority of people who are ethical vegans now, it was a journey. They didn't do it overnight. They didn't make the change perfectly. They went baby step after baby step towards aligning their actions with their values. I know that was my journey. I contemplated vegetarianism at age 12. I finally went vegetarian around 18, I backslid, I screwed up, then I tried veganism, failed 27,000 times because of cheese, then I finally got it. And I've had slips and screw ups many times since. It has not been perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better than it could be. And I support that. I support you in the positive changes that you're making for your health, for your family, for our environment, and for the animals with whom we coexist. I'm gonna keep telling you the truth. I'm gonna keep reminding and encouraging you to make better choices for yourself because no one will ever do it for you. And to take really 
really good care of yourself, of your gorgeous animal friends, of the planet that nourishes us by doing the best that you're capable of doing today. So that's just my two cents on the semantics. Thank you for watching. You know the drill. I will see you all very soon. Petunia doesn't want you to subscribe. She wants your mommy up to her shoe. You don't see that? Oh my god. What are you doing? What are you doing? You look quiet.